Yeah. So this oh, one here, oh my gosh. So this is actually be a, a smudgy on the top if you wanted to. Oh, yeah, look but at this that. This is incredible because it, that would be like eight inches of crochet cotton. Okay. Which I'll be supplying. Yeah. And then you dip that in to the ink and you can make the most amazing sort of linear, linear sort of, use yeah. that action. Oh, fabulous. You, you yeah. don't know how it's going to go because it depends on, like this is a straight handle, but if you've got a, a, a like a, a, a <laughs> handle with a bit of a loop on it, yeah. you know, your brain, is, brain kind of doesn't really know what it can do. Then you can dip it into here with all of these furry bits. Yeah. And then you can then roll that along like a bit of a, a, a doing a print with it yeah. so but then you can also one of the ladies called this the slapper because you can dip it in and then you can one lady in my class she was just so lovely it was in a fiber arts australia course at ballarat and she said lorna i really love the slapper <laughs> i'm going to use the slapper and i'm going to push this brush as far as I can oh so we ended up making a book and it was all about the one the marks that oh. that one brush would make wow, that's and amazing that, and yeah so some people think oh it's such a basic sort of brush and it doesn't take oh. very long to make I've also made them where you can you can you can sort of take the strands apart and put knots in them as well. Oh, so the knots will end up soaking up the ink a little bit more or you can do one as well where you loop it like like that. Oh, yeah, sure. That will then get a bit of an ink there and it will drag differently. Yeah. So, you know, that's one of my favourite ones as well. So um, I also... I like to collect different types of fibres so we can use jute and a whole lot of different things as well. I, I used um, commercial feathers that have been sterilised, so I'm going to see whether I can get, um, I can take some of those into New Zealand with me, um, like this one. Because if they can come in, they must be able to go out, right? Yeah, like these Oh, yeah, are, look at yeah. that. Oh, fabulous. Yeah, yeah. Fabulous. Pretty, pretty amazing. Oh, imagine that with some graphite powder. Yeah. <laughs> oh, graphite powder. Um, well, it's interesting because, um, you know, I also love Mark, so I'm, I'm so excited. And, uh, you know, I can relate to that person telling you, oh, you know, let's get serious, you know, what's the, with these marks, right? My three-year-old could do that. That's what we all hear. But, you know, people don't realize, um, I think behind – those of us who put the time into our art, and I, I keep saying this, and I believe that what we do in our studios is like a science because you are like a master with, with mark making. That didn't just happen overnight. You've been exploring and experimenting and making mistakes and things didn't work out and then they did work out. And, but everything that, that we do with passion, I think um, could be defined as a science. So for those of us who decide to be a serious artist, I mean, why not? What we do, we have to study so many things in color and um, texture and, you know, value and shape and, and all of our tools that we have, all of our tools and all of our materials and all of our surfaces, everything we had to do to get where we are, that required an awful lot of intense study. So mm -hmm. I, I really feel like artists often do not give themselves enough credit because they listen to what society has to say to them and it's unfortunate. So you know, we as teachers, what we can do is share that, you know, uh, there's actually an awful lot that has gone behind what they are doing, what we are doing, and to give themselves some credit. Yeah. I think it's about, like, just giving people permission to, to play, you know, right. like, just to let go, you know, like, and also, too, what I love about, I love about a, a group is that there's an energy in a group. Right. And, you know, especially when, when you know, people are just sort of starting out exploring their brushes or doing the mark making, the noise in the room, you know, that, you know, like, you know, that mark that, uh, you know, like that a slap or, uh, you know, it, it's, it's, just, it's just really, really good. And sharing, you know, yeah. like sharing what other people are doing. We right. all do it our own, in yeah. our own unique way. And, you know, and I just think that 
you know, it's, you know, and, and as a tutor, I find that, you know, there's a, there's a responsibility as well. And I love to carry that responsibility, even though it's hard at times, but, you know, letting, letting people, you know, make, make their marks and exploring it and, you know, learning about, you know, there's, there's positive and negative spaces in a work and letting, a, letting our work breathe, you know, later on when we're doing the artist books, you sort of learn to go, oh, I wouldn't have thought to put that there, yeah. but sort of like, you know, I love to make scrolls as well. Like I did massive 10 metre, 10 metre pianola scrolls and I learnt so much about, you know, how do you move in from one space to another in a continuous role and make it work. And, you know, that was, that was, that was such good fun. So I really, really I love scrolls, so. Yeah. But I also love the artist books as well because I think that recording recording your work instead of it just being on separate bits of paper, but by putting it into a, a book form, you, you know, it's a record of that, of that time and place as well, and you know, you learn so much about it and you grow as like I've grown so much just. You know, I did five years of art training, but I've, yeah. I've probably grown more in the last five years as an artist than I have in, you know, the previous, you know, 15, 15 years. So, so um, yeah, it, it's been really, really exciting. And, yeah, I just think that, I don't know, the, the connection to making your own brush is, 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 you know, really special. So people would be able to come away with their own set of set of brushes and their own brushes, you know, and then their own book, and their own book, and yeah. then then to be able to then build on working. Well, where's the next stage? You know, going on to where? You know, I can't wait to work with you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and I know, and and we have a lot to talk about, a lot to um, think about it's so much fun we do have about a year to think about this but for those of you out there who might be considering this workshop um, Lorna and I will have some really fun things for you to do um, like you've heard you're going to be making brushes and have a book with these wonderful marks and what I hope to contribute is um, yeah taking those beautiful marks that we've made in the first couple of days and um, we'll make our own book too that's um, uh, you know we have the book with marks and then we'll have our book with color and design and we'll work those marks into it in a way that uh, hopefully students will walk away with two books that they can take home. And yes. we'll be working in all the different mediums. It's really not about the medium. So um, it's either mixed media, it could be acrylic, it could be cold wax and oil. Um, in some ways, the acrylic, it probably lends itself more to collage, which I think, you know, we will be incorporating collage. A little bit harder with oil and cold wax medium, it can be done. But, you know, if we did, those who work with oil and cold wax medium, given that this is kind of a very different type of workshop than I've done in the past, I can envision more mechanical stitching. If you have, you know, bits that are done with oil and cold wax medium, tear them, cut them, and use physical stitching um, instead of the cold wax medium. You know, we do not have to feel like we have any limitations with any medium. If you love cold wax medium and oils, then let's just bring that and we will figure out a way to make sure that if the paper is too thick or the paint is too thick, we'll figure out a way to mechanically stitch that onto some of the mark making papers, you know, we'll make it work. Yeah. Um, so for those of you who might be interested in taking a look at the workshops available in New Zealand in 2020, uh, take a look at bellissimaartescapes.com and I'm going to have the uh, website on, um, you know, spelled because I misspell it every time. <laughs> and, uh, Anyways, it'll be on there. And uh, so thanks, everybody, for listening in. And we'll be back. Uh, we're going to be uh, on this channel. Lorna and I are going to be sharing some ideas and work that we do together. Uh, perhaps we'll start a project and uh, show you what we're both working on. I think that'd be a lot of fun. Don't you, Lorna? I can't wait. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So, um, yeah, with that, thanks, everybody. And uh, we'll see you next time. Bye.